Hey guys, just a quick video about the latest DLC for Le Mans Ultimate, which is uh, Imola, the Lamborghini hypercar, and the latest Peugeot hypercar now featuring the rear wing. I believe that's the main change. Of course, there's new liveries, but nothing that uh, really concerns me. There is also a bit of a list of... Uh, things they change so there's a couple fixes on, on every track to a lot of cars but it's all minor stuff there doesn't seem to be really any anything major that changes how you play the game how it works how the physics are whatever something like that so if you played the ultimate before this patch doesn't really change anything about that maybe there there are a couple quality of life improvements some stability stuff uh, for example, the menu for me stopped stuttering now. I do, however, still have the issue that um, I always need to restart the PC before starting the game. No matter what I did before, um, if the PC was running for half an hour, an hour or something, if I played another game before and then start the ultimate, the game will just not work properly. I'll have uh, frame issues, it's going to stutter, uh, the loading might not work at all and i can see it's just not utilizing the the graphics card for whatever reason it does so when i restart the pc and the first thing i do is starting the more ultimate then it works this is not an issue for any of the other games i have but at least um i can like consistently solve the matter by just restarting the pc before starting the game weird thing i don't know what creeps in there but but that's how it is so change log is on the website uh, it's posted on the discord if you want to take a deeper look but the main thing is the new content which comes for 12 euros i believe and so we should probably drive it i already loaded onto the track we will start with the lamborghini and the Lambo is, well, it doesn't really have a lot of this whole electric uh, battery stuff. There is a 50 kilowatt electric engine assisting, um, but that's about it. So it's not really, well, yeah. There isn't much to have from that side of things, so it's not an important part of the car. You already heard going through the pit lane that the engine doesn't i don't know start like a like a thunderstorm or anything oh yeah and even though i'm going hyper slowly this car is super sensitive to cold tires which is the first thing that we'll need to fix i'm gonna just uh try to aggressively warm it up which uh, completely failed here I think I have damage up though, so we can uh, deal with that and the tires will actually have some temperature. Well, that's a good thing about anything. Maybe if you've played the game already, you will know or you will know how the LMP2 car sounds. And I feel the Lambo sounds exactly the same. The gear shifts. Sounds exactly like the LMP2. We might have to put the brake bias a little forward. It seems to lock the rears all the time. Yeah, weird. It, it does not like the bumps in the chicane here either. And overall, the car behaves is... It doesn't really have a front end. And it doesn't really have a rear end either. And I feel if you'd put me in that car and um, not tell me what it is, I would think it's the LMP2. I can only really tell because it's green because it has Lamborghini on the steering wheel. But it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't, it floats around a bit. 
the rear isn't really enjoyable it's not something you you can rely on the front it's not something you can rely on it's not particularly pointy it's not particularly understeery it just doesn't ever seem to have grip it's always just floating and yawing about overall i'd say a very big car that doesn't give you a lot of feedback outside the road rumble and curb and yes you get the oversteer but there's nothing about it that says hey that's 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 unique here maybe unique is how it takes the bumps because it doesn't like them at all i jumps twice coming off those curbs So I don't think the, the Lambo here is actually what you are looking for in this DLC. Let's have a look at Imola maybe on a quick lap. You can see uh, the Ferris wheel on the left go going around the pits. Going along the pits always has um, yeah, a frame drop of 20, 30 FPS if you are... If you're limited already. But then anything else around the track seems to be just what a laser scan is a well representation of the track all dimensions and curves and everything seems to be more or less accurate so i don't think there's anything to complain here about oh yeah in terms of track detail or track modeling or whatever they are not any weird bumps in the road that shouldn't be there so it's all I think how you remember the track and I think if you've played it on any other game one of the recent versions that is so say ACC or Automobilista I don't know how late iRacing's uh, track really is the car seems super stiff The tree, I'm, I'm running ultra graphics right now. So when you look at the trees, they do look like 3D trees. Maybe the idea line could be a little more pronounced here, but I think this also just changes with how much it has actually been used. And I think this is about it, what we can say about the Lambo and Imola here. Let's go to the main menu real quick and try to swap the car. Uh, we'll have a bit of a loading time so we can talk about other stuff if I remember anything. Where is the Peugeot? Here. 2.6 liter V6. So it's going to sound a bit different. And I can tell you it's going to sound unique as well. Let's uh, take out all the other cars, which is or which would drastically increase the loading times because um, the more different models that need to be uh, loaded and put into the vram the longer the loading times are and i did a video earlier where i was loading into a race and I literally sat here for something what felt like three or four minutes it's much faster when you load a single car so now we're already um on the track especially when you load the gts because there's well I don't know how many different models and liveries with the LMP2s. It's a bit faster. But okay, let's go for the Peugeot, which I think is, if anything, if you want that DLC, if it's not the track, it's definitely not the Lambo that brings you to the DLC. Maybe the Peugeot is. I don't know if there are Peugeot pools out there anywhere because they've been away from prototype racing for a bit and i the only thing why i remember them is like world rally cars or something like that but i don't have any other place where i think the the peugeot really matters in terms of racing cars or if there are people out there who are like hey i'm a peugeot fan so this car generally probably has a hard place also in sim racing but it seems to be much better modeled than the Lamborghini, which just seems to be an LMP2 with more power and perhaps a slightly different um, downforce levels or just weight in general. But it didn't feel unique, right? Not the thing that you have in the game when you play the Ferrari, where you immediately notice, hey, that's something else. That differs from all the others. So you can tell the sound. Oh, 
has the same issue with the cold tires of course because cold tires don't work and that's just a rule book of the WEC and also what spun all the gentleman drivers in the Le Mans 24 hour race there were several people at night that um, yeah just got out of the pits and spun right away because they underestimated how tricky the cold tires are however back to the Peugeot here well, of course, I have to warm the tires for this one as well, but while we do that, you can listen into the engine a bit, maybe from the outside, give you a taste as well. Oh, maybe that's not the, the view I'm very good driving at, but you can tell it has external sound. Back to the cockpit and let's take the curbs and you'll see it's much nicer over the curb already than the Lamborghini. Perhaps part of it's also the setup, I don't know, but I'm driving pretty much the default setup on both. Nothing I touch there at least should affect how the curb compliance changes, so I guess it's just the car in general. The other thing with the Peugeot is that if you play ACC, the car it comes closest to is probably the Ferrari in ACC because it has this very pointy front end, but still a reliable rear end. So you can throw the car around pretty much. And the rear is just going to stick whatever you do to it. And only on power, you can overwhelm the rear end really. But into the turns, it's really tricky to upset the rear and it's super, super sticky and you can rely on it a lot and just flick the car into the turn it's going to start rotating and the rear is never going to be an issue into the turn so you can really rely on that and it's much easier to drive and it also conveys a bit of a unique driving feeling that wasn't really there in the lamborghini i to be fair i haven't driven all paths in the game to compare how it is but i also know the Ferrari is one of the cars in the game where I said it in another video already that this is unique enough to justify for the game to be there in the first place. Where you could tell, hey, they have a, a depth of modeling here. So much detail in the car where you would say this, this actually sets the game apart from the others that currently have the GDPs. And maybe the Peugeot is perhaps uh, the second car in in that row that comes close to it where you really feel it has unique traits how it behaves and it is actually fun apart from that there's the, the same critique i have about the game in general so it's not really puzzle related that is just how kind of vague the front end in the game is that there isn't really any difference in the first feedback depending on speed or tire load which yes i know would maybe not be realistic but as a sim racer i just need to have that additional feedback from the car which i would otherwise draw from the g-forces that in my seat here as you can see just don't have and i feel it's a bit of a philosophy thing if you say well first feedback should mimic the exact steering wheel behavior of the real car or if it should actually enhance the experience of a sim racer and it'll give them more information through the steering wheel so that they can control the car adequately actually on the limit philosophy choice there i'm not gonna dictate what the correct way there is but i'm gonna tell you that i enjoy the games that add a bit more especially around front end of the car you just need to know where you are how much grip you're tapping into if there's something left or not the same thing really goes for locking up the tires which yeah there are indications with leds in front of me on the dashboard that will kind of come up a bit as the tires start slipping too much on the braking and give you an indication that, hey you're close to locking up the tires so maybe dial break the brakes a little but these cars are so, so sharp that sometimes you just lock up and it's already way too late to do any corrections. The tire is never going to come back to you for, for that braking zone. So we definitely, I'd say, 
it would help if there were more ways to convey more of that tire slip under braking in the in the turn here into the steering wheel of the front axle in particular if the rear tire is locked however um since it will cause the car to to oversteer you definitely get that sensation through the steering wheel because the oversteer here is superb and it's super fast as well because sometimes you have a have a wild snap and it's like that i was yeah i was trying to show you but i overdid it but usually you feel rather comfortable catching the car even if you are starting to drive on the limit of the rear end um you can just step in and all the information is going to be there you get all the bumps you get the curbs and as soon as the rear steps out the wheel is going to indicate that without any delay so that is perfectly fine it's just about the front end the amount of understeer or grip that is available on the front axle that i still find an issue same for under braking okay we covered that no need to ramble on about that forever on the other hand a good thing in the Peugeot that we have is that it similar to the Ferrari in the game it does have a bit of a regen regeneration wine under braking listen to it it's not as pronounced as on the Ferrari but it's there and you can actually just use that regeneration noise to your advantage as a driver. Because if you start locking up, the regeneration noise is also going to disappear. Or become more silent or more muted. So, so, and thus telling you what is happening to the front tire. And this... I feel for at least for me immediately leads to a more predictable car there's just more information available how close I actually am to the limit of the tires and thus it's a much more rewarding experience because I'm not as much in the dark with the car as I was with a Lamborghini for example that didn't tell me shit all about what the tires were doing until it was way too late and I had to rely on the HUD where the tire would just start flashing red on the surface as the tire heats up from, from locking. Which is of course way too late and we need to know before. So I feel in this car this comes a bit easier and the occasional lockup is much less likely. And you can much quicker get comfortable with the car and start pushing it which is what I'm gonna try here for a lap. Into the throttle you always need to be a bit slow initial throttle application the rear end is always going to be a bit slidey and overwhelmed but once you're able to open the steering wheel on corner exit it's gonna stick the tc is not gonna engage anymore and we can push away The V6 sounds really clean. Please, no off crack. <laughs> ah, that's probably invalid. No, it's not. So we keep some of the gains. And now last corner wasn't too good. So we can break a little later, harder maybe. Overcooked it still. Better exit than last lap. We're not making it into the 130s, I believe. Would need another lap, but this isn't, isn't for hot lapping. But I think you can tell that I do in, enjoy this a bit. Because it's, it's much faster than the typical GD3 I do. And sometimes... You're just fed up with GD3s and you want to do something quicker because it also kind of challenges your brain in a different way because you have just less time to judge all the things that the car is doing and what input it might need. 
and it might also going back to the gd3s just help you because suddenly you feel like you have much more time to do all the things that you need to do with the car to place it where it needs to be because in the hyper car it really just it really just sharpens your senses going through the corners a bit quicker everything approaching faster the grip is lost and regained faster than on the gd3s this requires a bit more from you as a driver and it's much more difficult to talk while driving in a hypercar compared to a gd3 and that was a good corner so now my delta should be fine to go into the 130s if I wouldn't step out the rear there. I was too... Uh, too willing to reach it. Be bad with me, guys. We're gonna get into the 130s here before we... Before we stop the video. Just getting a hang of the brake there now. Actually, you can be 100% for quite a while initially while you still have the downforce pressing the car down and the slower the corner becomes so this year you can't just slam into the brakes you have to be more careful but now i think we can be very harsh again and just developing a sensitivity for the speed the car is doing and at which speed you are allowed to break how hard that's just really interesting and rewarding because you have to adapt so much <laughs> so maybe this time around we can break into it if not we'll stop anyway Come on, easy. <laughs> Probably there's gonna be people in the chat now. I do 129. Congrats. <laughs> All right, let me sum this up real quick here. Uh, the latest DLC it doesn't offer too much for Lama Ultimate, and I think it's clearly a way for them to keep the cash flow going while they are still in alpha stage or beta or whatever they call it. Okay, it's was it pre-alpha whatever early access many names for the same thing you are not getting a finished game but here is something that is working they don't seem to touch the physics a lot because generally things are fine here and i think they're satisfied with what they had and also building on our factor 2 is not exactly a bad base in terms of physics there are still a few things that i personally like to see change which is mainly around the force feedback of the front axle so everything else really is good you get the feedback of the the rear stepping out on the brake and you can easily correct that if it happens um, because the, the wheel does that before you actually notice as a driver what's happening the wheel is already counter steering so it's super connected to the car that is perfectly fine just the front end remains a bit vague which is i think what i would like to see addressed in the game and i'd enjoy it even more performance wise the game is good as long as you don't have too many different models on track and especially when you have uh, them all with AI, it's going to challenge your CPU, even the 7800X3D uh, is going to be challenged when you have uh, a race with 30 AIs or something, you will just not keep the FPS uh, into the 150s like I have them now capped and I'm barely using any power of the GPU like that alone on the track, everything in graphics was set to ultra for this, so you saw the game in its at its best basically then the dlc imola seems to be modeled perfectly fine i don't see any issues with the track where you'd say it's not worth the money the question is if the game has enough content in the first place to and you bought this for 40 something euros if it had enough content in the first place to justify buying additional content now or should this rather not just be part of the base game so i think we are talking a bit more about yeah kind of the pricing model of uh of an early access title at the end of the day 
Uh, and if you want to finance this project with that, and I think if they were honest about that, that this is about k keeping the cash flow going, keeping the studio afloat, perhaps. Um, we know that Studio 397 Motorsport games, they were yeah not in the best situation in the past. So it's perfectly understandable um, what they're doing, but I'd enjoy it more if they were honest about that. I think it's fine they are doing i guess as gets a good job here to some degree still you can be at odds with the whole menu stuff but things are getting better in uh yeah tiny steps i would say then about the lamborghini which i think in this um dlc ignore it okay consider the lamborghini not part of it because it doesn't add anything new to the game it just drives like a faster lmp if anything um there wasn't something it's stuck out with so it's not the car that you're going to go when you start the game hey what do i choose what's the nicest car what gives me the best experience it's not the lambo i think it, i think it's still the ferrari in the game but the peugeot here does appear to have um, a lot of detail to it as well and it stands out a bit among the other cars has a bit of few unique driving traits that the others don't have so if you are into that and you're really a wec guy and you say well this this is the class i want to drive this is the game i want to drive you will find lobbies here in the game you will have enjoyable cars uh, everything does work up to a degree and if you're perfectly fine with just having a couple of short races and uh, dialing a bit the setup into your meet then th this can already be it and even if it's just six seven or whatever amount of tracks it is right now this can be perfectly fine as a game after all in acc people stick to a particular car for an entire season so it's not like the amount of content is necessarily what is um making up the majority of the experience um, yeah, is it is it 12 euros for a track and one car then? I don't know, you'll have to judge if you're an IRS racer, you're probably just waving by and saying, well, 12 euros, that's nothing, that's half a track in iRacing. So go ahead and buy the DLC, but I think you should just be aware that why you're doing this, what you're doing this for. I think it's more to keep the studio afloat, keep the development going. I think they're on a good path here. This could be a good game, focusing on a single or two classes or rather a series, just like ACC did and was successful with it. So I don't think this is this is a wrong approach here, but there are still a few uh, edges to, um, what do you call it? To unedge <laughs> and um, get some more detail into the cars that don't have it yet but uh, at, at some points in the game i think the quality of it shines through and if you can get it to work from a hardware software perspective then i think you can have a good experience here so in the end you have to judge for yourself if you're fine with the content that there already is of course all the online lobbies are surely gonna host imola now so that you need to buy it but imola also is a great track so if you enjoyed the game in the past then you'll certainly want to get the dlc if you were held back so far from buying the game then i don't think the dlc adds anything new except the track now and and the pressure perhaps but i don't think these are the factors that will make people buy the game um so my recommendation is if you play lmu on a daily basis get it if you didn't so far this dlc is not going to change it wait for more and bigger updates and perhaps the gt3 lm or, or lm gt3 are going to be the point where you'll want to consider the game once we find out how they actually drive and that's it that's the video. Um, I hope I didn't <laughs> anger all the r Factor 2 LMU fanboys and I tried to be as, as precise and fair with the feedback as I could. So I'm um, looking forward to the next one. Bye.